There are tons of mind-blowing ways to use Echoes in Zelda Echoes of Wisdom that aren't as obvious at first, but once you start to think about it, you can do some insane stuff. One of the first mind-blowing ways to use Echoes was right at the start of the game with the Crouchula Echo. All you have to do to this Echo is put it in front of a wall, bind it immediately, and then press R to follow it and it can climb up an entire mountain and get you anywhere in the game to reveal the whole entire map. Did you know that you can combo elements in this game? For example, if you use an electric based echo, they would have to make direct contact with an enemy in order to electrocute them. However, if you use an echo like the Drippetune that can be found in the Farron Wetlands, it'll cause rain to fall which will supercharge any electric echo which will then allow you to shock enemies with more efficiency and deal more damage easier. I'm literally able to hold this buzz blob and run up to enemies and shock them. It's insane. For this trick, you're going to want to use a piece of meat, use this echo that you'll find in the beginning of the game, and here's exactly what you're going to have to do. You're first going to get that piece of meat, place it down, then you're going to summon the echo, bind to the echo, then pick up the meat, and then press R to follow, and the bird will just chase after the meat, giving you unlimited flying to wherever you need to go. You just can't bump into something, and you can't break the world's height limit. Otherwise, feel free to travel across the entire map in a straight line. In fact, I'm curious if someone can figure out if they can do that. Having an echo that can fly, spit bombs, you can pick up the bombs, not even take damage from holding this bomb, it's kind of crazy. And you can get this by getting the zero all the way up in Elden Volcano area in this specific location. And once you have it, you can do so much like breaking walls to get treasure chests. And the most mind-blowing part about it is when you're able to summon multiple of these out at the exact same time, it goes a little crazy. So when you throw out three of them, they all spit out their bombs. But when you keep spam echoing them over and over again, the bombs stay on the floor and don't disappear. So the bombs all stack up and it becomes this absolutely chaotic thing with the bombs falling everywhere. And you can use it to annihilate a bunch of enemies throughout the game, including even the Lionel, since the bombs also act like a little barrier. The crow echo can be used for money farming in the game. If you have one crow and it attacks an enemy, you can see that it throws out a bunch of rupees. And then on top of that, if you have any scattered rupees and the crow sees it, the crow will pick it up for you and it'll be added on to your amount of rupees. However, if you combo it with these accessories like the gold brooch and the silver brooch, that increases more rupee chances of happening and you'll end up having higher tier rupees showing up and as you level up try and get more triangles then you could throw out a bunch of these crows and massively just start taking out enemies running around with them and rupees are just going to be flying and dropping everywhere the spark echo is really fun because not only can you bind onto it to travel across an entire desert area or any long pathway but the spark echo can also be used to complete pretty difficult challenges especially the ones like in this location where you have water currents you could just use that latch onto it and it'll get you right to the location you need in order to pass through really simple now believe it or not there are two mind-blowing things that you can do with your bed one is placing down your bed echo just like this and then going towards the pillow edge and then while facing the opposite side of the bed throw down a tornado and this happens this can be used to jump up into platforms while you are sitting on the bed. The tornado just launches you. On top of that, when it comes to sleeping in your bed, there's actually an optimal way to recover hearts. Normally, you would just sit in your bed, sleep, and wait for all the hearts to come back. But the real trick is sleeping in your bed, waiting for the first set of hearts to go up, getting out the bed real quick, and then going right back at the first part. Now, if you didn't know, there are three tiers of bed. The first one in the game, you get another one in Gerudo, and then you get Princess Zelda's bed. Princess Zelda bed is the top tier one and you recover the most hearts by using that also side note made a totally different video on it but if you wear zelda's sleepwear outfit which you can watch that one to see how to get it you can recover hearts faster another mind-blowing thing to do is hit that subscribe button and like button and notification bell come on what are you doing you know you like these videos this is the flying tile and besides being able just to jump on it and get across platforms or use it to solve puzzles it can be used to gain infinite height it even reached the point of getting to the cloud showing up on screen and and here's an example of using it over here. And if you get the method down of pressing your controls a certain way, you'll be able just to hop onto the next one and climb higher and higher and higher. Hopefully someone watching this can figure out how to combo another echo with this to take this to the next level. The sea urchin echo is one of the earliest ones you get in the game, but can be used for so many things. 
This includes murdering enemies by just dropping a bunch of them on top of them, like this Chomfin getting completely wrecked. You can make a trap by placing four of them down on the floor, binding an enemy and throwing them in the middle so the enemy is absolutely stuck and can't do anything. Or you can even use a wind cannon and then drop a bunch of sea urchins to create a sea urchin turret. It's insane how you can make this a long range attacking echo as well without really trying. Or you can just bind it and walk around and run into things and and do damage. So take your pick on how you want to use the sea urchin. Let's talk about transportation a little bit. So besides just using the horse in the game, which is actually my least favorite method of transportation, there are echoes that you can use to get from one spot to another. One that's pretty common is going to be the Carmadillo. So pretty much what you want to do is just echo this out, summon it, and then you're going to bind onto it. You're going to basically just move a little bit faster while you're binded onto it. Another transportation echo that can be used is the wind cannon echo. Now, usually this thing will blow you away when you first encounter it, but after you learn this echo what you can do is face it in a direction then drop a stone or rock something that can't be moved by it pretty close by and then what you want to do is place yourself in between that exact spot bind onto it face the other way and then you have this wind cannon echo pushing you which is going to be pretty nice and helping you get across the wind cannon echo can also blow down sand piles but what's better than even the carmadillo and the wind cannon echo is the path blade echo which is a spinning disc that flies across an entire your area if it's facing in that straight line so it's going to be able to fly down a direction that you put it on as you can see in this clip i want to talk about the deku baba echo and how insane this thing is normally when you have a deku babu echo and you throw it out there this is the level two one by the way it's going to be simply stuck in one spot and if you try to move it you're going to pull it out and it's going to end up just breaking and dying off and you don't want that to happen so something cool that you can do is actually place another echo for example if you put a table down you you can throw the Deku Baba on top of that table and then you can move that table making the Deku Baba actually mobile and able to go around and attack enemies while on the go. Pretty nice instead of just throwing it out every single time. Another idea is to use a boulder which also kind of protects the Deku Baba from getting hit because you can't break a boulder and the Deku Baba will have no problem taking out enemies. And something further than the boulder is using a volcanic rock but that's not as crazy as putting it back on the path blade echo combined with the Deku Baba level two is probably the most ridiculous thing you can do because when you throw it on top of it it'll fly across the area on top of that the deku baba can attack things you can bind this device if you need to so if anything approaches to the deku baba it'll hit the path blade and get hit by the spikes so it's really cool that you can combine these specific echoes with it and it's just insane the water block is one of my favorite ways of also transportation in the game because what it does is simply you can build it up in a whole entire lineup against the wall go up there you can cross areas that have gaps with it by swimming right through it but you just need to keep in mind to continue using it non-stop over and over again it needs to be attached to something otherwise it'll just break off and you'll fall off but the water block also serves a really important purpose and that purpose specifically is to drown enemies this game gets very dark zelda actually drowns her enemies and murders them so pretty much what happens is you want to drop a water block in the middle of wherever you are find an enemy bring them right to this water block and as soon as they touch it they're dead something cool that you can also do when you throw out a water block is if you have any hydrozos these little water zoles slime things they're a little bit weaker if they're small but when they interact with the water block or actually any source of water you can power them up to be a lot more larger to deal damage to your enemies and when you get further in the game you could throw out a bunch of these about five of them and they can all become giant and you're just stuck with these five giant slimes very cool stuff i always return back to octo echoes because of how awesome they are and the range attack that they have and the fact that they also come in different elements the fire ones burn enemies the ice ones freeze them followed up by the second attack that breaks it and does massive damage so octoroks are my go-to and the cool thing about octoroks is that you can actually just stack octoroks like a turret and fire at your enemies to annihilate them also something cool that we talked about earlier is that you could also throw octos on path blades so that way the path blades will be flying across while the octos lock onto the enemy shoot them the path blades will come back shoot them again so there's a lot you can play around with the octos and maybe you guys can come up with different ways of putting them on stuff this is the pot echo and while you may think it's just a regular pot that you could jump inside believe it or not these pots actually protect you from re-deads when you go up to a re-dead they normally scream at you and you completely freeze in place but for some reason when you enter inside of a pot the re 
Undeads don't even react. I'm not sure if this has to do anything with lore wise. So if there's any Zelda lore fans, please help me and explain this one. But it's just really cool. And it kind of blew my mind that pots save you from redeads. Now, this one is going to be more mind blowing for speedrunners if you're into that more than everyone else watching it because it just involves me talking about things like tables and things like trampolines. Now, normally, if you need to elevate yourself to get to a certain spot, we usually drop one, two, and then put one next to that. And then we jump up and we jump up to the next one to get ourselves an elevation. But if you drop something down and slightly push it over to the right, just very slightly, then you can drop another object down and make a stairway by only using two. That's all I got to say. If you're a speedrunner, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The whole mill echo completely blew me away because I didn't know that you could use its mechanics outside of the dungeons or areas that it belonged into. If you find a cave and there's areas that you can't actually reach, but you notice that there may be sand in that spot, you can actually go on top of that cave in this little brown patch over here and you can place down the whole mill echo and it'll make the hole that you could drop down into and you can access secret parts of the caves in order to get some heart pieces. It just kind of blew my mind that this actually worked here. Another really fun echo to use is the ball and chain trooper. The fun thing you can do with this echo is it can defend you from a bunch of enemies because they just rotate the ball and chain non-stop regardless of if there's an enemy there or not. And when they do see an enemy, they absolutely lock onto the enemy and throw their ball and chain at it. But what's really cool is you can also bind onto one of these guys and jump around. So if there may be an enemy flying, it's a lot easier for you to just hit flying enemies if you can reach the same height as them. If you thought this was all mind blowing, you need to check out this video over here.